Hi, my name is Zora, I'm from Hungary, and I'm a senior at New York University Abu Dhabi. Now, I'm an athlete, I love to travel, but I'm also a nerd. I've been a nerd ever since my older brothers went to school, and they let me take a look at their math homeworks and timetables. And I've been a nerd specifically since that, since that math competition in second grade, that was just so much fun. And so I was dumb enough to keep being a nerd and continue studying science, even in college. And so when a year ago, I spent a semester studying in New York, I joined an organization called Women in Computing that, as the name suggests, promotes women in computer science. And quite frankly, all I thought in the beginning was, great, now I know about all these amazing opportunities that are specifically for women and therefore, they'll be less competitive and easier to get. That makes sense, right? But then, towards the end of my studies in New York, I attended a networking event that was organized by the Anita Berg Institute. And I arrived to this event with the excitement of learning about the future of cognitive computing and meeting other technical women in New York City. But I walked away with much more. So as I, I was mingling around before the talk and just having small conversations, I started to talk to two other attendees and suddenly one of them asked, so what do you study? To which I answered that I study neuroscience and computer science that are my major and minor respectively. And at this stage of my studies, I'm used to responses like, whoa, that's really exciting, how cool. But this time I was given the response, that's weird, accompanied by a facial expression that was suggesting that there was some sort of discrepancy between my career goals, my look and my gender. And so I thought, great, does this mean that I'm never going to be taken seriously in my field just because I don't look like I should? But this other attendee who gave me this response was also a woman. A woman who did not think I would be studying a STEM field and who was underestimating the proportion of women at this event actually being technical. And I could have been offended or I could have just moved on, but instead I took a step back and told myself, I really did not have the right to be offended. She just took an educated guess based on what she and society thinks a typical STEM major would look like. Also, I told myself, I really did not have the right to be offended. As when I joined Women in Computing, thinking that opportunities for women will be easier to get, I was doing the exact same thing. I was underestimating the quality and number of my female fellow scientists. And so then I actually started to care. So I started to care, and as it naturally happens, I started to do some more reflection, mainly asking myself, why did I not care before? And I realized that it is probably because of the lucky background where I'm coming from. I was lucky to be good enough at sciences to never receive the comment, it's okay that you're not doing well in math, you're a girl. I was also never told that computers are not for girls, which believe it or not, still happens today. But most importantly, I was lucky to attend a college that has very small size and great diversity. Now, if you don't know my school, my grade has about 150 students from about 50 countries. Also, my science classes have a pretty high proportion of women in them. But most importantly, because of this diversity of backgrounds, at my school, you can't really pick one person and say, they look like a typical STEM major. And because of that, we sort of all fit in. And I'm pointing this out because fitting in is proven to be really important to us humans. But let me get back to that later. So after this networking event in New York, I started to do some more research. The true science major as I am, I couldn't just rely on my own experiences, but I had to back them up with numbers. And once I started to do that, the numbers I found were quite shocking. Now at this point, I've been talking for about five minutes. And throughout those five minutes, there was a very subtle change going on in the screens that you could only quite notice if you kept paying really close attention. So when I started to talk, the screen was purple like that, and just now it was blue like this. And this very subtle change was symbolizing the leaky pipeline, which is a metaphor often used to describe the way how women leave the STEM field. Slowly, continuously, and unnoticed until suddenly there's so few of them that people start to realize the lack of female presence. While in certain areas of STEM, undergraduate women make up 60% of the students, as professionals and academics, and especially in leadership positions, they're less than 30%. Now you may say, 
That is interesting, but why should I care about the leaky pipeline? And there are so many good reasons out there. When I read Elaine Pollock's article on the New York Times arguing that the future that engineers and computer scientists are designing will be the one that all of us will inhabit, and we want women and minorities to have a sense of belonging in this future, we also need them to have a sense of belonging in these professions. I thought, finally, someone described the situation perfectly. And when I hear discussions arguing that there's a lack of software engineers and hackers, all I can think, for God's sake, you have this bunch of men doing computer science and very few women. If you just unlock the potential of women, you will double the, two of, will, will double the pool of prospective computer scientists. And I'm obviously not the first one to point this out. But then why aren't there more solutions to solve this problem? But most importantly, when I think of my friends, women and men together, who study the STEM fields with me, I just don't see a reason why one group should succeed in this field and get further, why the other should drop out. And statistics are telling me that that's what's going to happen. And when I think of my female cousins, who are still quite young and don't really know what they'll do when they grow up, even I have the gut feeling that they will probably not do computer science or engineering. And I really don't like that. And as I am a math and science nerd, you can imagine that I really don't like when I don't understand a problem or when I think a problem just doesn't quite make sense. So out of this frustration, but also out of excitement that there's so much to do for women in STEM, once I returned from my semester in New York to the UAE, my friend Beatrice Yonascu and I started a student group, We STEM, which stands for Women Empowered in STEM, that is aiming to promote diversity and female presence in the, in the STEM fields at our university in the UAE, and hopefully beyond. Now, there is so much to do for women in STEM, but I think that by tackling five main points, a big chunk of this problem can be solved. What's more, these five points can be concluded in one sentence. All genders need to have a sense of belonging in the STEM field from early on, and they all have to be given equal opportunities and equal support. Well, let me go through these five points in more detail. So it's been pointed out before that women have to be invited to the STEM fields at an early age, as without a foundation, these fields are really hard to enter later on. I believe this can be done through middle and high school outreach and by involving girls in hands-on projects and research so they can see the practical side of doing and studying STEM. I pointed out before how important fitting in is. And so even when people arrive to college with the idea of wanting to major in STEM, a lot of them drop out just because they feel they don't belong to that group. I believe this problem can be solved partially by having a group on campus, a no pressure environment where women can get together and work on their STEM related projects. However, it's also really important that women learn to work with the opposite gender and that the conversation about women in STEM does not only involve women. I hope that by involving men in this conversation, the outcome can be more fruitful. Fourth, a lot of people have pointed out before that society need to consciously remove the bias and give more support, mentorship, and opportunities to women in STEM. Now, I'm not saying that I'm going to teach society to do that, but I can try to teach my own community, and hopefully some of you will do the same. And finally, there are a lot of opportunities out there that we either don't know about or are too scared to take. I believe that by having a group where women can encourage each other and push each other and share their knowledge and network with each other, we can contribute to, contribute to each other's success. Now, these solutions are far from perfect, but in return, they are feasible, practical, and realizable. Now, why am I here talking to you about this tonight? Well, I believe that the STEM fields should not be an environment where women feel they don't belong to. I hope that all of you can just take a moment to reflect on your own friends and family and ask yourself, do you see a reason why men should succeed more in these fields than women? Since starting VSTEM, one of the critiques we've been receiving the most often was, why is it for women only? Why not for men too? And it is not for women only, and definitely not against men. I am not imagining a future in which all the leading scientists and engineers will be female, but a future where there is equal opportunity 
and equal representation. I'm imagining a future where a woman succeeding in STEM should not be an exceptional story. Well, I am here tonight because a year ago, I actually started to care. From someone doing STEM who also happened to be female, I started to think of myself more consciously as a woman in STEM. I don't see a reason why women should not fit in in the STEM field. And so I'm working on plugging on the holes in the pipeline. And now it's time for you to help me stop the leakage. Thank you.